Good afternoon, Robert. Uh, this is a group that seemed kind of deep in, in, in a lot of people, but uh, injuries are starting to take a toll. Uh, it, what's the, the, the good thing about this group right now uh, with the guys that are available or potentially available this week? Yeah, um, I would say I know, I know the Titans last year have been through, been through this kind of last year with a lot of guys. Uh, going down and the guys getting called up. And uh, really, I would say it's the, the mindset that Coach Vrabel brings to this team. Uh, you see how guys prepare uh, this year. He always tells us, you know, prepare like you're going to start. You never know what's going to happen. Um, and that's all the way down to our practice squad guys. And uh, so guys are just, you know, it's kind of next man up. Is everybody, you know, preparing to, to, to be a starter? And um, situations like this, uh, we've been working with a lot of our, our practice squad guys. Um, throughout training camp, throughout this whole year, for for moments like this, that are familiar with the 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 style of play that we bring, and I would say it's just uh, next man up and be prepared like you're going to start. Uh, Jim Watt. Hey Robert, appreciate your time. Um, I, I guess four games in the season. I mean, what are some of the things you think are trending in the right direction? What are some other areas maybe for the offense you think you guys have got to get better at if you can get to where you want to be? Yeah, I would say, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of the, the same things that kind of everyone's been saying uh, these four weeks is, is second half, um, be better in the second half. But when you really look at what we've been doing on offense, um, scoring on our, our first possessions, um, being able to do that uh, consistently every game, being able to score in the red zone, when we're down there, not just field goals, um, touchdowns. Um, so really it's like we're doing the right things. It's just, we just have to be consistent with it in the second half. Obviously we're a fast, um, I would say we're a fast starting team. It's more so just keeping that tempo up throughout the whole game. And uh, I would say just finishing, finishing in, in the end zone when we get down there and get down there a lot more. Uh, Teron? Yeah, Robert, as far as your involvement in, in everything, it seems like that's increasing. What would you say is behind that over the last couple of games that has gotten you, you know, more involved? Uh, just rhythm. Uh, I would say the Tannehill being able to trust me out there, being able to find that spot in the zone, um, beat man coverage. Uh, really, it's just uh, him getting comfortable with me, finding, finding me, uh, with, with throwing the ball, uh, TD calling the plays, and uh, obviously just me being out there. Um, being getting in rhythm again, uh, being able to play fast, and I think it just just having those opportunities with the quarterback and the play calling um, to work hand in hand. Uh, Corey, hey Robert, I know Derek's message to you guys after the game was about staying hungry, but how much of a sense of relief is there for you guys after starting zero and two to get back into two and two and being in a prime spot in the division? Uh, I would say it, it it didn't it doesn't really matter the two games that we won obviously you wanna you wanna keep keep the the trend going forward uh, we flipped the the narrative from the first two weeks um, but uh, really just being able to keep keep the trend going keep keep winning it's all about the the next game uh, the first quarter of the season the first four doesn't matter uh, it's a long season. Um, we got to win this one at Washington. That's that's the most important one lined up. And uh, really, once you get that ball rolling um, and keep the momentum, have the guys playing playing fast, playing confident, um, and having fun, I think that's what uh, when you can really see the team getting rhythm and and, and become unstoppable. Uh, John Gunner. Hey Robert. No, um, hey, you, one, you one, second, one second. One second, sir. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, um, yeah, I know you, you talked about the um, the second half situation there a little bit earlier, um, and, and also what you've done well in the first half. Does the, the, the first does the fact that you guys have done so well in the first half make the second half situation a little bit more puzzling to you? And, and I guess uh, same sort of uh, question: How do you keep it from kind of getting in your heads a little bit? You know, with upcoming games. 
I mean, you can't let it get in your head. I mean, it's one of those things when you're a football player, you just got to keep your head down and keep keep working. Um, and that's one of the situations I feel like uh, it's, it's the NFL. Teams are good. Teams are competitive. Obviously, we're jumping on teams, whether it's the first drive or the first half. And uh, they're just being able to make some adjust, uh, adjustments and uh, just make plays as well. And then, uh, obviously, when you're, you're up, you obviously want to, play the clock game, clock game, uh, possession game. So it, uh, it just goes hand in hand. It's uh, you being up, you want to close out and win the game. And then it's also um, defense is playing well, being able to make some second half adjustments. And then on our end, I would say a lot of times we have been stepping on our own foot, whether it's protection, run blocking, um, catching the ball, con um, converting on third downs. I think all those situations, we just have to be better in the second half. Uh, Teron. Yeah, one more, Robert. How, how do you feel mm -hmm. you guys have done, you know, on that on the perimeter there, taking advantage of the the one on one matchups and just the whole situation, the defense is being so overly focused on Derrick Henry? Just trying to capitalize when when the when the when the play is called, uh, whether it's uh the play action or quick game, um, being an open target, whether it's downfield, quick, uh quick in the flat, um, uh, finding zones. Uh, I would say uh, the guys been playing pretty well when Cal Phillips was up, available. Um, trailing Nick Westbrook, being able to um, contribute on some key third downs for us. Uh, even Cody Hollister at times. Um, our tight ends getting involved. You see Chick being able to make some plays. I would say really uh, the guys has just been really make, making the plays when it comes to them. When, the, when that ball is in the air, you see guys trying to do everything to, to possess that ball and keep, this, uh, keep the chains moving. Um, whether it's young guys, um, vets, I think everybody's contributing to to help this pass game. We know what we could do on the ground, um, and we know we could be really, really dangerous in the air. Uh, it's a mean combination with our ground game in the pass game. Uh, Chris Harris. Hey, Robert. I'm curious, as a veteran and a leader in that room, what do you say to Traylon to kind of keep his spirits up over the next couple of weeks? Yeah, it's a, it's a tough, um, Andrew, especially your rookie year, you want to go out there and, and make plays, prove your value, prove your worth. Um, just having an injury like this, I, I haven't spoke with him. I haven't even seen the timeline of, of how long or what. But uh, I do know just uh, just being injured out there, you want to get back as fast as you can. Um, and my thing is just come back healthy, uh, come back ready, um, whether it's mentally, physically, um, we, we're going to need all our guys. We've got the right guys to step up and make plays while he's gone. We're just going to need him to hone in and take care of his foot uh, or toe and um, just just get back uh, healthy and, and come contribute when he can. Uh, Corey? Hey, Robert. Um, I guess A.J. Brown did an interview last week where he talked about how, uh, I guess, serious things were in Tennessee under Coach Vrabel, and, and there wasn't a lot of room for, for fun. This is you, your third NFL team. Is it really any different, or are things more serious here? Yeah, I would say every, every coach and team uh, has their own style, has their philosophy. Um, and I would say, yeah, Tennessee, it, it, it is it's serious, and, and that's, you, you want guys in a team that takes winning serious. And I think that's just how it is at, at practice and at work in the workplace. You got to come in and work with a purpose. Um, whether it's weight room film, it is like, know your job, know your assignment. And uh, really, I think once you, once you do that and know your assignment, know what you're doing, when you go out there on Sundays and that's when you're able to play fun, have fun, play fast, and then play loose. You know, Sundays are our day. Um, obviously throughout the week, it's, it's the working week, but, uh, go out there on Sundays, you make plays, you win games. That's when, that's when the fun comes in. Uh, last one, Jim. And, and, that, and mine's kind of along the same lines, Robert. I mean, when you came here, you, you kind of knew what you were getting into it. What, what, what's the culture been like? What's the vibe around the team been like, um, compared to what you thought it would be? Uh, exactly what I what I thought it would be. Uh, a lot of hardworking guys, obviously getting done um, on the defensive end, being able to get some turnovers. Um, I want to say in every game that we played in, uh, defense has been playing pretty well. Uh, on the offensive side, obviously, you know, we feed off the ground game. Tannehill being able to deliver in the play action and also work with his legs. Um, 
really it's just uh, it's, it's hard nosed football. We want to go out there and, and beat it up on our opponents, uh, run the ball, play physical. When we have the ball as receivers, we want to finish violently. Uh, so really, it's just uh, it's, it's it's the same mindset. We want to go out there and win games. We want to play physical. Obviously, it is a different culture um, than than the the two places that I have been and the coaches that I have experienced with. But at the end of the day, it's all for for winning games. Uh, and our team is buying in, and that's how you that's how you win games. You're a guy who does a lot of dirty work. You're usually, guys in the you know on that defensive line don't get a lot of attention. What's it been like for you this week, where you have been getting a lot of attention for the play you made on Sunday, whether it's from teammates, you know, family, friends? Just what what's your what's your text and uh, phone calls been like? Uh, it's been blowing up. It's been pretty. It's been pretty fun and funny. You know, uh, uh, getting some uh, getting some jokes from the DBs. Shout out Christian Fuller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but we've been, I've been getting some jokes from the DVs and uh, some of the teammates about me break, uh, break dancing on my head. So it's, it's been fun and it's been cool to find uh, other ways to impact the game. Uh, Corey? Yeah, I was going to ask you, um, you know, we've all seen that play and the, and the celebration afterwards. To you, what what are you most excited about? The interception, the headstand or the uh, the long power slide in the end zone? <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna say about the interception just because it was a big play um, to help the team. I mean, not to take no away from the head stand or, or the slide. I just think that was all just a, a great momentum boost for the team, and it, it brought a lot of uh, positive energy to our sideline. So the interception definitely. Uh, John Glenn. Thank you. Yeah, I, I'm sure the uh, some parts of the towards the end of last season were were a little difficult for you. Probably not in as much as you would have liked. What what kind of mindset did you take? you know, to the off season and, and going into this year to kind of win back your spot and, and get back on the field, you know, as, as much as possible. And, and why has that worked uh, so well? I mean, I think the biggest uh, part of being on off season is just like not taking anything for granted. Cause um, I mean, at one point you could feel like you're on top of the world the next minute, everything can be gone from you. So just not taking anything from granted, um, putting a lot of more focus on taking care of my body to prevent injuries and uh, just trying to stay focused. So, I mean, I, I, and, uh, like, and also, like, coming into this season, I just wanted to improve on every little detail I could, trying to become more of a student of the game. Uh, Teron? Sierra, knowing your route to getting to this point, I mean, we're talking about four different schools, you know, a lot of grinding and everything, the JUCO route, all of that. How rewarding has it been for you to, you know, get to this point? And what has been the key for you to, just keep keep pushing when things may have looked like it, it was coming to a close. I mean, I think the key for me to get to this point is just resilience. You know, being uh, through all those jugos, a lot of emotions. You know, uh, I lost family um, at, at some of the jugos, so it was really hard. So I mean, just staying resilient and, and staying focused and knowing like if you just keep staying resilient and keep fighting, I mean, something gotta something's good gonna come from it. You never have anything good from coming and just standing at one spot. So. Just staying resilient and keep working and not giving up. But this is honestly, I mean, this is a dream come true. You know what I'm saying? Having an opportunity to play in the NFL, playing at this level, I just don't want to, I don't want to ever take, I don't want anybody to ever feel like you could take this for granted because this is something that doesn't happen often, you know? Uh, David Buckler. Yeah, along those lines, how frustrating was last year? I guess you probably weren't healthy for much of the year, right? I mean, how hard was it to sort of grind through that and, and try and stay involved? Um, it, it was extremely difficult uh, for me. I mean, I know just dealing with pains um, from uh, from day to day to even at practice, just trying to go out there and battle. Like it, it's, it's really, it's really, really, really frustrating when you get to see your, your teammates out there celebrating, fighting, they fighting, fighting the asses off, practicing hard, and all you can do is sit there and watch. And it's, it's extremely frustrating, but I think it also speaks to like being resilient. Like I was saying, like uh, I learned how to be resilient through JUCO, you know, through all the schools, adversity taught me how to be resilient, taught me how to not not stop, not quit, not give up. So it's just, it's just, it was just another test. And, you know, I'm gonna keep getting tested throughout my whole career, but, you know, just staying resilient and keep moving forward is, is the goal. Uh, Corey? 
Hey, Tierra, this Titans organization seems to be a pretty good match for you as far as getting the most out of you and, and seeing you improve. What is it about Coach Rabel and this culture that has really connected with you to make you the player you are now? I mean, I think uh, with Coach Rabel and, and Coach T, they just – they uh, they know how to coach an individual. You know, I mean, they got a whole collective, which is a team, but they, they coach individual too. They're going to put you in the best position to be the best player you can be, period, at all times. So it, that's, that's one thing that I am I noticed personally from Rabel and T. And also, that they it's not just about football for them. It's about life. They care about you as an individual and a person. And they want to see you succeed. And they want to see you do well. And I think um, a lot of times, a lot of coaches lose sight of that, of building a relationship and building real, genuine relationships and care about the mental health, uh, the physical health of of a player, of a per, of a player and a person, because at the end of the day, I mean, football is is it's going to end at some point for everybody. But you know, for them to care about you outside of this and more for than more than just football is 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 something a lot of people, a lot of uh, the players can't experience because you know they don't play it. Uh, Jim. I think I'm gonna be okay. <laughs> Sounds like you're a pretty self-motivated guy. Um, and have been, you know, since you you started your career. I mean, what what do coaches, uh, maybe Coach T, what other coaches, what do they harp on you? What do they stay on you about uh to kind of keep you getting better uh, you know, from their standpoint? Never getting satisfied, never getting comfortable, never feeling like you can't find a way to improve. Um, I think is is a thing that I, you know, I, I, you know, at every game I, I talk to the coaches. I sit down, I go over my film, tell them what they tell me what I need to work on, um, and I feel like never, never getting satisfied, you know, never, never being content, and then, you know, um, you know, I, um, yeah, just never. Uh, Corey. Yeah, T.R., I also just wanted to ask, you know, you guys were sitting there in that 0-2 hole, um, and you knew you had the Raiders and the Colts coming up and things weren't going to be easy. How, how big of a relief is it to, to get out of there with two wins and, and kind of reset the season at 2-2 two and two after a quarter? I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's huge. It's huge, you know. Um, and, you know, going down another game would have been a um, – it would have been, a, you know, we built off of resilience and, and scrappiness and always, and always fighting, but – you know, it's huge for the team. It's huge, huge for the morale around here. You know, um, it's great for the chemistry, and you know, it just gives us more confidence. And we just we just decided to go back out there and fight again, man. At this point, uh, last one, Jim. And Tia, I think I read you. Maybe you're the second of of eleven children in your family, eleven kids in the family. What was that like? What was the age range and uh, and how how much do all everybody kind of support one another? The age range. So the oldest right now is forty eight, and the youngest, which is my little sister, which is twenty three. So I mean, it's a pretty big age range. Um, for the most part, it's just like a war zone. War zone. You didn't <laughs> you didn't eat first. He wasn't eating. So, but um, but it was it was good having a having a large family. You know, um, it brought everybody together closer we all had to learn how to work and then negotiate or imagine trying to get the tv remote <laughs> you had to learn how to work and negotiate with, with each other so um it's good man um i have um i have uh two, three older brothers um and the rest are sisters and so it, it's, it's a good family we came from a basketball family <laughs>